Welcome back to ABS Grand Tournament. Um, this is the third quarterfinal we have today. We have seven pl uh, seven matches planned in general for the final day um, because it's day two of the first ABS Grand Tournament. Before we jump into the game, before Firebat and Cypher will battle against each other, um, just a small announcement. The host of the tournament is absgaming.com, a go-to place when it comes to esports. There are um, there are a gathering matches and schedules for 10 games, 10 esports games that are being, you know, just covered by them. So you can uh, check all those matches and results on their site. And the site has also Firefox and Chrome extensions for notifications, which is really cool. So be sure to check that out if you want to be on, um, on top of every single match being played in the esports world. And another important thing, if you want to be part of a giveaway action with Battle.net gift cards, uh, you can type a giveaway, uh, sorry, exclamation mark giveaway comment that gives you a link to the giveaway, or you can participate uh, another way if you tweet something about the tournament with a hashtag ABUSGT, and then you have a chance to appear on the screen, but also you automatically uh, go into the giveaway. And yeah, that's it when it comes to announcements and uh, Firebat and Cypher. We talked about it uh, yesterday a lot because Firebat is sporting a new, an unusual lineup, right? Indeed, he's brought Rogue, uh, which is almost universally agreed to be the class that got the least help from, from TGT. Um, all the Rogue cards that came out were kind of trying to push this control, slow Rogue sort of archetype that just doesn't really work. Um, so Rogue is kind of just left where it was, um, whereas the other classes have all improved with their new options. Um, but also he's brought Shaman, and his yes. Shaman is a heavily teched out Shaman that we can only assume is a planned counter to Handlock. Uh, he, has exactly. he has double big game Hunter in there, along with the normal uh, double Earth Shock, double Hex as well. Um, so Shaman consist uh, considered one of the strongest matchups against Hanlock anyway because of the power of things like Earthshock and Hex. When you add double big game Hunter into that mix as well, you're suddenly looking at uh, an incredibly powerful answer to, to what Hanlock wants to do. And then in Cypher's lineup, Lothar, what do we see? There is a Handlock. Yes. And this might be the weak spot, the weak link. Uh, the weak link in the chain of Cypher's decks, which might uh, be the downfall of his semi-final. Because, um, as we know, this is Conquest, and what matters is your weakest deck, not your best deck, which will get you a win. It's about the weakest deck that might go like 0-3, 0-2, or whatever, and just not win the final game, and you will not prevail in the semi-final, and then will just, you know, be kicked out, because that's a single elimination tournament. And as we talked uh, before, Firebat is sporting a most likely um, anti-handlock lineup. So it doesn't seem to be going well even before the game for Cypher. Yeah, it probably is, um, from Firebat's perspective, a complete anti-Handlock lineup. Uh, opinions are very split on the Oil Rogue versus Handlock matchup. It's one of those things where like the Handlock players seem to think they're favored and the Rogue players seem to think they're favored. Um, but I've had a very extended discussion with Firebat about that matchup, and he thinks Rogue is, is pretty heavily favored, and he just generally tries to build up the big dagger, just puts a weapon buff on his dagger whenever he draws it, and then uh, tries to bypass the Molten Giants uh, part of proceedings entirely just by like building up like a 10 plus damage dagger and then just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. swing at face and blade flurry at will um yeah, so yeah he definitely thinks rogue is favored in that matchup so uh, no surprise to see him include it in this lineup which does seem to be heavily heavily targeted at handlock definitely true and now we see that uh cypher is actually starting with the handlock and i think that's fine because maybe if i wasn't really thinking that um cypher will start with his target right yeah so Maybe he wouldn't um, exactly start with the Shaman, but unfortunately for Cypher, he did. Yeah, I mean, battle of the mind games here, right? Firebat has definitely come out on top, and he's got the exact matchup he wants. Even though we've just said uh, most of his, his, or all of his decks have decent matchups against Handlock, this is mm -hmm. definitely the one deck he's built to counter Handlock specifically, and this is the matchup he wants to get in every single round if he can. So he's done a great job here queuing into the... Uh, the first matchup and he does have the the nice haunted creeper to start out and more importantly the big game hunter so yeah i mean the handlock now the the new iterations of handlock can still play different threats than giants and twilight drakes which namely are 
you know, just Void Colors and Doom Guards. Uh, but still, having that big game hunter ready in hand gives you a lot. Yeah, um, but because of the extra removal that you have packed in this deck, you can almost afford to use something like an Earthshock or a Hex to deal with a Void Caller if you really want to, or just, you know, um, punch into it and use a, a Hex on a Doom Guard or something, because you have that extra insurance of having the big game hunters against the Malganis and the and the Mountain Giants and things like that. Um, so because of the, the extra removal, you do kind of have that, that spare removal to use on a Void Caller if it comes down to that. Mm -hmm. That's true. And now, uh, the Task of Dynamic is one of the most swingy cards in Shaman. Uh, it's, all, it's also important to play it on your left side, because uh, you can spawn a, let's say, Flame Dunk Totem for your right side minions, yep. and for your totems that will be spawning after that. Yeah, Fireback correctly positions the, the Tuscar Totemic so that if it was the Flame Tongue Totem, the Flame Tongue Totem would have spawned in the direct center of his board. So, small thing there from him, but uh, nice, nice use of positioning to maximize his options. So now he does have the decision about whether he wants to uh, to Earthshock this Void Caller or not. Um, would gen you? Generally, you do want to preserve the Earthshock for the Twilight Drake, and I think I would... Uh, continue to reserve it just for now because the void caller doesn't have much of an impact on this board right now anyway it just has to mm -hmm, run, mm -hmm. run into a taunt totem and there's nothing on the board Ooh. Ooh, that's a really great draw and i don't blame now uh clearing the board because if there will be a single shadow flame you would lose that mana tank totem and i think that has a lot of value in this matchup yeah absolutely i agree with you um still susceptible to to something like a dart bomb or you know less so to an owl but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you know still that sort of thing but yeah shadow flame would have been pretty devastating there so i, I don't mind the clean trade but now the twilight drake is going to come down and start threatening to get a lot of value on this board after we've seen the air shot disappear true second well, mother thing to them well you know, i think we, you played how, it right how do you feel about drawing two cards every turn that seems pretty legit right yeah definitely legit because you didn't see a shadow flame and i would assume that um Cypher would play this Hellfire anyway. Because yeah. you kill a Taskmaster, you kill a Mana Tide Totem, which is really important. And you also clear a Totem and just, you know, that triggered the death rattle from Hunter to Cooper. So definitely no AoE, but he goes for Azure Drake just to be on curve. I don't mind this either. You do draw the same one extra card this turn that the Mana Tide mm -hmm. would have done. And you're, you know, you're replacing a potential 0 3 body with a 4 4 body, which is just a lot more competitive against this Drake and also puts a lot more pressure onto Cypher's life total. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the card, the card draw has worked out exactly the same as it would have done. And he still has the option to now follow up with a Mana Tide later if he wants to. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if you would like to play the Mana Tide Totem, you would have to follow it up with a Totem Golem, yeah. which. No, which uh, basically denies you the fire elemental on turn six. That's very true as well, yeah. Uh, oh! Double fire elemental, but probably gonna have to commit to a big game hunter this turn. Yes, I think so. And you probably just want to go face in this situation, because why would you trade three cards into a uh, into a Twilight Dragon, right? Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think the three for one trade here is happening. Um, it's and what about um, the uh, Rogue Biter weapon? help with the trade um so that lets you retain your three two on the board you'd have to like rock by other drake and trade with that mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. uh the haunted creeper so mm, i still don't like it. wow is he gonna i guess with the way this deck is built he feels like he can just starve the handlock deck out of value entirely would you then just play second month i taught him instead of hero powering Maybe he just feels that's too much of a commitment to any AoE, especially since he's breaking the spiders this turn. And then this way, if there is AoE coming, he can just refill next turn with Pilot mm -hmm. Shredder and Manatite Totem. Okay, yeah. That's a very good choice. With the Pilot Shredder and Manatite Totem, yeah, that's definitely right. Oh, look at and that. There is a Hellfire. Mm hmm. So Cypher is going to make the decision here between whether he wants to try and develop his board again with something like the Mountain Giant, uh, or whether this board needs to be dealt with. Um, in this situation, it's kind of easy to feel like, okay, well, the Mana Tide's kind of done its damage at this point, right? Like, yeah, definitely. Do I, do I need to deny more cards? He already has all the options in the world, but um, I still think this board kind of has to be dealt with, and it looks like it's going to be tap Hellfire. Yeah, all right. You can really play, a, um, you can really commit a big minion to the board, because a single Flame Tongue Totem yeah. just denies you that minion. <laughs> And there oh, wow. comes the second big game hunter. And surprise, Cypher, you just dealt with one mana tide totem, and now here comes another one. So just in case you felt like I didn't have all the options in my deck in my hand right now, now I really do. 
I mean, we all know how this matchup should work, and it actually goes that way. Yeah. Yeah, Firebat's tech choices are just working out so well for him. He got the, the value out of his Earthshock, even though it didn't hit the optimal target of a Twilight Drake. He still got really nice value out of it. Um, the Mana Tide Totem has just helped him to draw all the options he's needed. He's been able to big game Hunter one giant already, and now we see a backup big game Hunter and a Hex ready to mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. So, And the Doomhammer with Rogue Biter Weapon is just such a big threat. Yep. Um, in fact, he's very, very close to just having lethal next turn. In fact, with the tap, he's now one uh, off lethal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we didn't see any crackles in this deck. Uh, we haven't, no. And of course, something does have to be removed to make room for all this stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what from the normal midrange shaman he isn't carrying. Uh, things like Feral Spirits definitely don't seem like they're in this deck. We haven't. I don't think we've seen Lightning Storm be drawn yet in any of his games, have we? Did we see mm. Did we see Lightning Storm yesterday? No, we didn't. Uh, probably that's that's the, the, the card we want to cut because usually you deal, you deal with the big minions. So they're like on one or two targets on the board. Right. So there's no big... No, no big focus on a huge board for an opponent. Usually, you lose to those to those um, type of decks anyway, like Zoo, like Hunter, right? Yeah, I think I think you can afford to push all in here, right? You have another Hex, and you just are threatening Lethal with the Doomhammer Rockbiter. Mm -hmm. um, although, I mean, you threaten Lethal with this hand anyway with the Doomhammer Rockbiter. So, do you need the additional damage? I think he's going to say yes. Yeah, he's just going to push all in here. He has the Hex to back it up if one Molten Giant comes down. And uh, with things like Fire Elemental to take care of, uh, you know, a possible turn this turn is something like um, Molten Giant, Healbot, and a Taunt. Um, so next turn, he'll have the Fire Elemental to take out the Taunted Healbot. He'll have the Hex to deal with the Molten Giant, and then he'll have the Rock Biter to push through Lethal. So. Mm -hmm, exactly. Easy peasy, right? Yep. We do see the Molten Giant get drawn, but there are no Taunt Givers in Cypher's hand, so he doesn't have any way to protect himself right now. Molten Giant Healbot is about the best he's got, unless he wants to tap. And a Dark Bomb to the Palace Shredder for a Doomsayer, right? Yeah, but if you're developing your board, you're probably just going to take down the Big Game Hunter and just hope that he doesn't have it, but unfortunately, yeah. Fire Ellie and Rock Viper oh. is just going to seal this game, and there is a Lightning Storm, so never mind. Yeah. But anyway, more importantly, Rock Biter for 10 damage to face. Pilot Shredder going to swing in for 4 as well, and Fire Elemental going to come down and seal the deals. Firebat goes out to a 1 0 lead in mm -hmm. game 1. That's the um, that's the matter we actually predicted will be, go will be going that way, so there's no, like a hard, uh, no big problem for Cypher. He knew he would lose this most of the time. Mm -hmm. I would say it's like an 80 20 for yeah. Firebat in this situation. And uh, this is just like, it's starting. Like Firebat wanted to, but the problem, the problem. I mean, he hopes that the, the his strategy will be um, just going forward. So he wants to queue up again into the handlock with whatever decks uh, he will be playing, mm -hmm. and just focus on punishing that handlock deck. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how Cipher chooses to proceed through this. Um, oh, he's 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 keeping the handlock. That's interesting. Yeah. How do you feel about this strategy? Because I, like I, yeah. under I understand the mentality that you know at some point he has to get a win with this handlock. So maybe just try and get that out of the way first, and then try and hope that if he does get the handlock win, the rest of Firebat's strategy falls apart. I mean, I would do the same with opening with the handlock, but if I lose, I would definitely switch out the handlock because of the uh, nature of the threat of Firebat's strategy. Uh, I would like to get as much information I will, uh, as I can. So if I would, uh, if I go bef uh, with different decks before uh, queuing up again the handlock, I can win against those other decks that are focusing on uh, winning against my handlock and get more information about the tech card. Like let's say maybe the druid is sporting additional uh, big game hunter, right? Or is sporting a uh, additional silences or something else that can just help me make decisions when I'll be playing my handlock for the final win. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but from Firebat's perspective here, he has kind of the slightly awkward Druid hand. You're never sad about this against Handlock because you have the answers to whichever turn four threat comes down since you have the Silence and the Big Game Hunter. Uh, but you haven't ramped. So, you know, the, the Silence on the Twilight Drake is just a one-for-one -one trade and you don't really have any proactive threats of your own to play out yet until that lower Feb on turn five. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, how do you how do you feel about this sort of hand versus handlock? It's not bad. I, I think you can just grind it out. You don't necessarily want to be super fast. Okay. If you have like double sabotage on your hand, then you might change um, 
that might change the pace of the game, but in this situation I think it's kind of okay. Of course it's bad to not have a, um, a, a mana acceleration at all with Druid, but it's not the end of the world, especially in this matchup when you're attacking out against the Handlock. Yeah, it, it's worth knowing here that, Fire, uh, that sorry, Cypher does have kind of the dream against Druid, which is the uh, Void Caller into the 315 Jaraxxus being summoned mm -hmm, onto the mm -hmm, board. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about, you know, some matchups, it's just so important to be able to play Jaraxxus as the hero form value. Um, because, you know, you're in no danger of being burst down, so Draxus can just seal the game over time. Against Druid, that's not the case, because 15 health is just not that safe against Druid. So you would actually much, much rather have the 315 value on the board, and that's exactly what he's going to be able to get out of this Void Caller at some point. Now one of the silences is gone. Yeah, we talked about it, like, over and over again, uh, that the Druid has a problem with dealing with high health minions yeah. if they don't have 7 attack or more, because mm -hmm. then... They can use the single removal they, they usually do, uh, do do have in their decks, which is the big game hunter, because no one uses mulch or uh, naturalize. So, yeah. This is interesting. Is Firebat looking to pop... Okay. I was just wondering whether he was looking to pop the Void Cooler first, just in case a Malganis came out, and then that would be a much more important target to Big Game Hunter. Mm -hmm. um, but it looked like he just wanted to cycle a card there just to try and get some more uh, proactive threats into his hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you think that's the turn when you play uh, Draxus? Um, it looks reasonable, right? You can just uh, trade into the big game hunter, get your 315 on board, and put an Emperor down alongside. Yes, it. that looks like the best Pretty option. Pretty legit. Yep. So next thing you can follow it up, like, most likely uh, Druid will trade with the Emperor. Yep. And then you can just fill the board with the <laughs> enormous taunt. Yeah, I like it. Um, speaking of enormous taunt, Firebat does have one of his own to come down here. Um, it is going to be made to feel slightly bad by uh, its superior taunt on the other side of the board, but still, a 510 is uh, is nothing to be sniffed at here. So, get your 510 down on the board and trading the Emperor here, and you're not you're not feeling too bad. But this Jaraxxus is quite possibly about to become a 416. Oh, oh, well. look at that! That is a fantastic draw to go along with that Dark Bomb that he already has. Definitely. And mm, should you taunt up the owl? I think you do because you don't want to lose that owl to a single swipe. Mm -hmm. Just gets caught in a swipe, just gets taken yeah. out of the hero power. So, yeah, I think I mean, buffing that be... up with the Argus seems reasonable. You won't be ca caught by the hero power if the ta if the drags will be taunted up. But Damn. I'll definitely agree that taunting up the owl, owl should be an option with the defender of Argus. Well, now, unless... that, now that he's tapped, he can't do that, right? Because he's ob he's kind of obligated to Dark Bomb this turn unless he doesn't want to remove the minion. Mm, uh, he doesn't want to. Oh, wow. He's actually just not going to Owl it this turn. This is a really interesting play. Why don't you Owl that? What are you fearing? I don't really know. Sylvanas? Sylvanas, maybe. Yeah, could have a pretty serious issue on this board. And I guess maybe this is right. I mean, how scared are you of just one five attack minion on the board that has to plow through all this stuff? I don't know. Mm -hmm. He is going to he is going to end up losing his Jaraxxus for it though. Yeah, that's that's the issue. Like, I was thinking Jaraxxus is kinda winning you the game here. Yeah. And if you lose that, then you then you might actually like lose the game entirely because you lose the the uh, the ability to soak up so much damage into the Jaraxxus from the minions from the future minions, which will be like trading every single time. Hmm. Um, in fact, he doesn't lose his Jaraxxus, and the play he made is actually going to pay off pretty big here, because he has a potential Shadow Flame plus Dark Bomb on the Ancient Watcher here um, to just pick up the, the two minions on board, push through a bunch of tempo. Re re oh, oh, that's my. even better. Oh, that's better. I just wanted to say they tap first for the Mortal Coil. Yeah. Absolutely. He has two mana to spare. Nothing really to do with it. Um, seems unlikely he'll play a big game hunter for tempo. It doesn't seem nah. too necessary. The 410 is about all the tempo you need right now. But, you know, what looked like a pretty appealing play before with the Shadow Flame and Dark Bomb has suddenly got absolutely ridiculous. So I would be amazed if we see anything else except that play happen. But at the same time, Cypher went down a very different line from us last turn. So he might have a mm -hmm. very different perspective on how this game is going to play out.
But I have no idea what what is your plan if you are not shadow flaming this turn. Okay, no matter. Whoa! Mind. Top of dark uh, form on the emperor instead. I don't understand that. I don't. Really. Yeah, I mean, he preserves both taunts this way. That's the only upside I can see. But he has another taunt giver and he has a heal bot in his hand. So, and they're, you... and they're cheap. So it's not like they're even, you know, really slow plays. So his long-term yes. sustainability against Druid is really strong right now. What he doesn't have is more proactive threats to play. So I mm -hmm. think maintaining that 410 on the board is like priority number one right now. Because that's the thing that's going to win the game for you. Yes, agree completely here, and you give your opponent time to develop his board. Yeah. So, really strange line of play there from Cypher. Not quite sure what the deal is there. He does pick up something a little proactive, but without a demon in his hand to, to summon from it, it's just not looking that competitive on this board at all. So, all of a sudden, well, all right. All of a sudden... <laughs> Hang on. I was about to say, all of a sudden, this game is uh, looking kind of miserable for him, but um, yeah, the, the extra Doom Guard coming into hand there certainly makes a big difference. And you've already seen a lot of removal be used from your opponent. It's basically an additional Twilight Drake. A taunted, I mean, not a taunted up, but a Defender of Argus buff mm -hmm. Twilight Drake in this situation. And I like the positioning here from Cypher. A lot of people make the mistake in this situation where they'll just put the Sun Fury in the middle anyway. Um, but you know the, the important thing here is just uh, like have the Sun Fury off on its own, just in case you want to be able to taunt that up later with mm -hmm, an, addi mm -hmm. an additional minion and not yeah. in the middle of two other taunts. True. So um, Firebird is missing those crucial savage roars to go through those taunts and just deal lethal damage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he doesn't have any kind of draws. Those double innovates now are really holding him down. They're like an anchors when it comes to their hand. It's definitely we're definitely gonna see him use one here, probably just to innovate out the uh, the four six bear. It's kind of sad against a shadow flame, right? But you saw two uh, dark bombs and no hellfires. Yeah. But you can guess your opponent doesn't have a hellfire in his hand. But he did get two, three new cards. Yeah. And I think, you know, from our perspective, we thought Shadow Flame was pretty damn good for two turns. So you can imagine Firebat has, was thinking the same thing. So he might just have the read mm -hmm, that Shadow Flame mm -hmm. is not in Cypher's range right now. And that's not a thing that's in his hand. But yeah, um, so, I think the turn definitely starts with the Mortal Coil here, right? Uh, does it? You can also turn up uh, the Void Color attack into the into the, uh, the into the door to the Claw, the fresh one. And then you can Shadow Flame. Uh, would you... Owl the uh, I don't think you should owl in that, that situation. If you keep that owl for so long, yeah. you most likely want to keep that for for Sylvanas, right? Okay. And you have an almost almost guaranteed clear with the Sunfield Protector from the drop. Okay, oh, that's... actually, I like actually like this play a lot because um, he's gonna just get his Doom Guardians to play right now, safe from combo five seven on board. Yeah, I like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, okay. Sure. It just retains the full value of his taunt to still uh, taunt two minions later on if he needs them. So yeah, I actually like that line of play a lot. Um, but I think specifically the Owl was being reserved while he had the Jaraxxus on the board because Sylvanas mm -hmm. was so terrifying in that situation. I think with the um, with the Jaraxxus gone, the Sylvanas is slightly less scary. Although saying that, he does now have the Doom Guard on the board, which is kind of equally bad against Sylvanas. So yeah. I, maybe that isn't true. Getting a Doomguard carrying you back for five with Savage Draw, that would yeah. be just <laughs> hilarious, actually. Never saw that yet. So it feels safe to tap here. Um, if he doesn't taunt this turn, he is dead to the second Savage Draw top deck. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know Cypher is a player. Oh, is he going to try and snipe the Harrison Second Harbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. Uh, it worked out, but the second Savage Draw is the lethal. And. It is. Well, just slam that on board and pray that you don't die next turn. Pretty much. Because on one owl was being played. No one plays Saffron Souls anyway mm -hmm. right now. Only one player was playing Black Knight yesterday, and he's not in the tournament. Yeah. Although maybe if Firebat's teching really hard against Handlock, right? Maybe. Maybe Black Knight is a card that's in his range. No, no. I mean, um, Cypher probably doesn't have like Black Knight in this situation. 
yeah, I just say like maybe maybe there is one other player in the tournament. Maybe Firebat somewhere along the line has decided to sne <laughs> sneak a Black Knight into this deck, but it seems unlikely. Uh, so do we have any lethal options here? No, no way Not we can really. get the Mortal Coil to to clear out. You can only do eight to it with the Defender of Argus with one minion. Um, so no way to, to bank a minion into your opponent's face here and pick up lethal. So I think just securing yourself as best you can this turn has to be the play, right? Just oh yeah. wow, he's gonna go and go, he's gonna go ahead and tap. Which all right, that's fine. Well, that's lethal right now. Uh, with the hellfire, yes, it is. It's a good tap there. Yep, tap. Seems legit. But um, I feel like uh, just playing Hillbot and Defender of Argus that turn would. Uh, just would have been sufficient? Yeah, it would, just, well, would have won the game almost 100% of the time. Um, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. The tap there picked up the Hellfire, so interesting to see what his uh, play would have been otherwise, whether it would have been the Argus or the Heal Bolt. So. But he's picking up, that's a really important win, I would say. He sealed uh, his Handlock deck. Right. And as we know, that was the plan for Firebat to actually, well, uh, as we know, we, we kind of think that was the plan uh, all along to target the um, oh, what? Look at that. That is actually a Black Knight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that caught me off guard, really. Yeah. Um, okay, let me just finish the thought, the initial thought. Actually, the, the, now I'm certain that Firebat was targeting Handlock. No, no, this is and... in Cypher's Druid. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black Knight is in Cypher's Druid. Okay, never mind. Never mind then. Yep. Then it's really weird. Yep. Okay. Um, back to my thought. I, I, I'm st we're still not sure. We're just kind of predicting that Firebat was targeting the Handlock. And when that's out of the way, kind of puts some pressure on Firebat, but still those decks can prevail. Mm -hmm. Rogue was always known uh, for, for you know, kind of be a good matchup against Druid, even without taunts, because you have all those means to clear the minions and get a tempo advantage by playing cards like Sub and Backstab. So uh, this is not entirely a bad matchup for him, but it's still it's kind of discouraging if he was targeting um, if he was targeting the uh, handlock deck. For sure, and just like was Cipher the player that we saw yesterday with the Black Knight, or was it someone different? Can you remember specifically who it was? I think that was someone different. You think it was someone different? Okay, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I like him going with the Wild Growth there over the Darnassus Aspirant when he had the option of both, because uh, Aspirant, pretty fragile against a rogue, you know, something yes. something as simple as um, Backstab, Deadly Poison, or any of the above, you know, it just would have uh, denied him playing the Shredder on, t on turn, uh, turn three. So the consistent option with the Wild Growth, just make sure he gets a Shredder down this turn and then uh, can develop from there. Ooh, that's Pretty damn sweet for the agent. Yeah. Pick and up a kill here. Maximum value has to be really cool. This is the way you have to play this matchup as the rogue player as well. You, mm -hmm. you need to keep your eye out for these turns where you can simultaneously clear a board and develop your own minions because that's, yeah. that's what Druid hates to deal with. They, they hate those tempo swing turns where suddenly their board disappears and your board appears. Mm -hmm. they're, they're fine mm -hmm. with just minion combat where you both just have a board. That's fine. Druid can do that as good as any deck, but... When the board's... Or even better, because yeah, of the debates. Exactly. When the board swings entirely, that's that's the situation where they start to struggle. So uh, Firebat knows this as well as anyone, and he's gonna he's gonna look for those turns as much as he possibly can. I like the uh, use of the weapon here instead of the agent, because first of all, you're not weak to swipe next turn. Yeah. And you don't have the blade flurry already in hand, so you can maybe you can assume that you will get uh, the buffs for the weapons in the next draws if you will get the the blade flurry anyway uh oh that is a beautiful pickup sap earthen ring farseer looks pretty goddamn perfect here amazing yeah and then you can next turn just spam more spells even play the uh the pirates just to make the, the, the sylvanas less valuable yep and what he's doing here is basically you sap sylvanas and then at this point because his board has developed so much by you know it's developed an extra one one and a three three Sylvanas is now just kind of too slow because the rogue's threatening to push 10 more next turn, you know, plus the damage from their hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can trade some of it down with the shade, but still, it's just a ton of pressure. And against a bursty deck like Rogue, cards like Sylvanas just become too slow at this point. So, uh, yep. I would favor this turn. I think it's time to uh, reveal the shade here. 
Yes, I think so. And uh, just draw it up through the claw and hero the power. Claw. Yeah, drew the claw, hero power, take oh. down the violet teacher. Wow, all right, he's just gonna. So after my little tirade about how Sylvanas was gonna be too slow, Firebat, uh, sorry, Cypher disagrees with me. He's just gonna go ahead and play it. And a no mission inventor. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, interesting text. And also, a thing worthy of noting for the newer players uh, is the fact that um, Sap basically is like a skip your opponent's turn card mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Druid matchup. Because basically your opponent spends a whole turn developing a single minion and you deny that value. So you use two mana and a card to virtually gain a whole turn. Yep. And it gets valuable, more valuable as the game progresses. Yep. And it looks like Firebat is just pushing all in this turn. Um, we might see the Eviscerate. Yeah, the Eviscerate on the Sylvanas here looks really nice because he has a four out of six chance of taking a really, really low value minion. He's going to choose not to attack. It looks like the Farseer got taken because it lost the green yes, border. Yes, it lost the green border, yeah. Um, so that's the reason he chose not to attack with the Violet Teacher beforehand, because now he can just pick up the nice trade here if he wants to. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ni nice sequencing from Firebat there. Hmm. Now, this turn, you most likely just want to play Ancient of Law. You need that swipe. Without the swipe, you're not making a comeback absolutely um from cypher's perspective we certainly see that like digging for swipe looks like his win condition here but um lower theb can come down the following turn from firebat and put an end to any of that nonsense so um but you know cypher doesn't know that he knows that looking at this board right now swipe looks pretty appealing so he's just going to dig a bit deeper in his Ooh. deck and there we go there it is up. So he picks up also a Azure Drake for next turn. Oh no, never mind. There's Lotheb and yeah, that's yeah. Just, you'll see. So Lotheb will allow just a nine mana swipe if he wants to make that play, uh, but it's not quite going to be enough to to deal with the board here. I mean, how do you feel about actually even still trading when you have the Lotheb in play? Because if you play Lotheb and go face, the nine mana swipe is actually still a complete board clear. Oh yeah, that's true. Hmm. Okay. That doesn't sound too bad. Let's see if Firebat is the player that goes like, you know, to this uh, with the safe play. I would I wouldn't count on that. No, when... yeah. If we know anything about Firebat, he loves being this guy right here. The guy that says, Well you go ahead, you have it. I'm gonna make you have it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like that style. Yeah. We'll get slightly punished by that, but uh Wow, the sabotage, sabotage attack also, actually will be also amazing next turn. Because you have a no mission inventor into sabotage to deal one of the minions, and usually um, maybe the maybe the druid player will, will just, you know, pick up an engine of war, and that's a great target for sabotage. I mean, not this turn, but like in the following turns. Is Cypher possibly counting uh, two turn lethals here? He can't be, because he has to address the board. Or yeah, else he's, he's just dead next turn, so... Yeah, 9 mana swipe is the play, so Firebat does get punished slightly for his play, but... You know, he, he gets rewarded by banking a crap load of damage on the opponent's face, and he's just mm -hmm. gonna go ahead and sprint here and hope that that picks him up an, uh, enough resources to, to finish out the game. He used one Eviscerate. Yep. He used one Eviscerate, but we haven't seen a uh, Tinkers be played yet, so the double Blade Flurry is looking pretty appealing. It's probably one more Blade Flurry than he would have liked, but yeah. Uh, things things like Azure Drake probably would have been his best draw there, just to um, you know maintain a bit of pressure on the board, or if he picked up some combination that was exactly lethal, that obviously would have been effective as well if he was able to get lethal this turn coming up. But... The cards he drew don't have too much of an impact on this game right now without uh, some sort of weapon buff. Mm hmm. It's true. Now, in this situation, Firebat is kind of pushed to use the clears here, but at the same time, you want to develop the board. So let's, let's see if there's a way to, an example, just kill the Droid of the Claw mm -hmm. and leave the Path Shredder up and still play a minion. Preferably the agent, right? So if you use backstab on the Druid of the Claw, then the agent. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's the four damage lacking one. Looks like he's going to start with the backstab, fan of knives. Uh, something like an eviscerate would be a really nice pickup here, or a deadly poison would also be a board clear. But he's... Well, he used one, so that's the problem. Yeah. But the Farseer isn't bad either, lets him, to de lets him develop double minions here, take care of the pilot shredder quite nicely, and uh, this board now maintains the, the status quo ever so slightly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Cypher has a really good hand if he just picks a single Innovate. He does, yeah. So what? Do, how, how do you feel about just playing an Engine of Law to heal yourself? Kill one of the minions? And probably don't want to play the Shade at all. Hmm. Because you are weak to a big Blade Flurry turn that, uh, in the upcoming, um, upcoming turn for Firebat. Yeah. You've seen one Deadly Poison. Um, I think if your opponent had a reasonable Blade Flurry turn, like Deadly Poison was a really good draw off the Fan of Knives from there, because Deadly Poison Blade Flurry would have been a nice ball clear and pushed a bit of extra damage to the opponent's face. Um, so I think you're not that scared of Blade Flurry happening. Okay. Um, and he, but he's just going to go for the extra security of the heal, develop the shade on the board. And I don't mind this play too much either. Uh, although it's sabotage will end up getting a decent amount of value either way here. Uh, start off with the prep sprint by the looks of things, and then he always has sabotage to fall back on if he feels he really needs to, to remove one of these minions. There's the second Visserate and a deadly poison for the Blade Flurry. Hmm. Uh, well, you can clear with the, the Blade Flurry deadly poison, but it's not really appealing because you lose your only minion on board. Yeah. But then, next turn, you can fold up with an Azure Drake to kill a second Ancient of Law. No, no, the, uh, anyway, uh, the, the, the two Ancient of Laws were already played, so it right. makes no sense. Um, hmm. What do you think about... Just... It's going to sabotage first here, wow. That's weird. If you hit Druid the Claw... Oh. She does. I mean, this lets him get three more damage to face if that's what he's valuing, but okay, that, that seems ambitious. All right, he's going to go for it. I mean, this does set up lethal for next turn and force his opponent to trade, and as we... Oh, oh never my. mind. Well, that's game. That is game right there. And again, this was a recurring theme yesterday. We were we were talking about some sort of strategic element of the game, and then top deck, double, top deck combo just comes along and makes it all irrelevant. And yet again, Druid does Druid things. Innovate, Just double damage. combo, enormous amounts of damage. That's uh, 9, 16, and 24 to 30, 36, 40 damage. 40 damage. That is almost Patron Warrior levels of damage, though. Yeah, but you had two big minions. <laughs> yeah. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Cypher is picking up a second win. Interestingly enough, because we all thought that Firebat will have a huge advantage in this match and it's not going his way at all. And now he's left with a kind of unfavorable matchup. Uh, I would say Firebat is not really um, that. To, uh -oh. Well, he plays Sabotage. Okay, never mind me. That might be a good good matchup for Firebat, uh, to be honest. Unless he will be uh, he will be killed by a frauding Berserk combo and not Patrons. Because mm. he has the means to clear the board from Patrons and it was actually thought that uh, Rogue is a good counter to Patron Warriors some time ago. But then, it, like, I don't know, people tend to switch that um, thinking, way of thinking. Yeah, I agree. I think the Patron is favored in this matchup, but we also saw Harrison Jones in Firebat's deck, so he does have two uh, weapon destructions, so if he can get mm -hmm. those to line up against both death fights, um, that will be a huge advantage for him, because as we've, we've mentioned several times already, like, death fight really is the linchpin that holds this entire deck together, so he's able to line up both of those and just take the death fight whirlwinds out of the equation entirely. Um, then yeah, that could put him in a pretty good position. Definitely a strong build of Rogue to be going into this matchup with, even though generally Rogue is slightly unfavored. True. Uh, he's just going to favor developing the 3-3 minion here. No value from the battle cry, but you know, getting the 3-3 on, on the board, demanding the weapon from your opponent. Um, we see that Cypher does play Shield Slam in his deck. Um, so this is more likely the uh, the shield block version as opposed to the more tempo e version that we've uh, seen RDU play and we've seen Sixo um, achieving rank one on on various servers with with uh, things like Dread Corsair. If you're playing Shield Slam, you're certainly playing uh, copies of Shield Block in your hand, in your deck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and that also means you most likely are playing only one fear war axe. Yes. And this is one of the cards that will, would have a lot of value in this matchup because it clears all those agents and farseers. Yep, uh, Rogue infamously has a lot of 3-3 minions in their deck, so Fiery War Axe does get a lot of work done. Um, one of the reasons why it feels pretty safe to cut a War Axe from Patron Warrior at the moment is that there is basically no Rogue about. Um, so, you know, one of those matchups where Fiery War Axe is really strong just isn't mm -hmm. a factor. Um, but yes, he would love to have the, the second Fiery War Axe in his deck for this matchup. And both players really not finding much to do in the early turns. Well... Firebat probably just going to go ahead and cycle another fan of knives. Picks up a Tinkers. He's looking for those minions that he wants just to, you know, just place on the board. There's uh, preferably just one minion on the board, which has more than two attack. Yeah. Probably not, um, hmm. Probably not uh, a card like a no mission vendor, which he actually plays in the Rogue. Hmm. Yeah, the no mission vendor is a really interesting addition to this deck, but. Again, just more more burst, more removal, more situational hand cards coming into the hand here from Firebat. So this looks like a six mana hit face, re-equip dagger pass turn, which is uh, not really what, what we want to be seeing. And it almost looks like, you know, two really heavy control fatigue decks are playing against each other here because no one wants to develop anything. Mm -hmm. um, Acolyte of Pain it really looks like the first minion that um, might be played out here, but he doesn't even have any way to get too much immediate value off it, unless he wants to slam it himself, which will cause him to overdraw. So, Yeah, I just wanted to point it out that you can't really do the usual thing, which is slamming the Acolyte of Pain when the game doesn't develop as much as you would like to. And you don't have the Emperor, but imagine if there will be an Emperor draw, 3, 6, nine, 10 cards. Do you want to even to play the Acolyte of Pain? Because you would have to use the coin just to... I think you have to coin nothing, yeah. yeah or yeah. Um, at the very least play the Unstable Ghoul alongside it, but that's dangerous because you're just giving way... Whoa, he is... Whoa, is he doing that? Okay. Wait, what? Three, six, nine, seven, no, he goes, not... to, goes to ten right now, that's fine. So he, ca he, has, he has to coin to... out a Fear War Exit, but that was really fortunate for him that he got it. Right. Um, but he still... I guess he still had, the, like, two... Um, two armor smiths in his deck mm -hmm, he okay. could hit and in like worst case scenario even if he got taskmaster you can coin taskmaster because then you lose two cards and you draw one more so you still wouldn't be in the overdraw situation i mean that's i don't the, think he plays taskmasters when he plays shield slam shield blocks that's a good point yeah but i guess um even the unstable ghoul would have been acceptable to play because again you're coining out two cards um and then the Acolyte of Pain at most only draws one more, so that would still avoid overdraw. So there, there was always a safety fallback option, um, but yeah, the Fiery War Axe was a nice option to pick up. Hmm. Uh, so it equips the Tinker's Oil. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just hold on to this entirely. I think he's safe in the knowledge that Cypher hasn't been playing Weapon Destruction if he's seen his lists yep. from yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we go, he just holds on to the, to the big dagger here. So the fear works will do what it's meant to be, so we'll clear the free free from the board. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have, I think the plan here for Cypher is just to wait for Emperor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if he shield blocks this turn, he's more than likely gonna have to. Okay, well, he drew the armor smith, but before mm -hmm. the, before he saw the draw, it looked like the play would just be to equip raw death spite with with double charge. Wow, he's gonna slam. Okay. Well, he's really looking for really the Emperor. Really looking for the Emperor, yeah. yeah. He can still play out the Armor Smith here to avoid the overdraws. So this is totally fine. Um, but yeah, without the um, without the Armor Smith being drawn, it looked like he would have had to have just played the, the four mana Death Bite and kept both charges, and then Sabotage would have come down as a really heavy punish. So, uh, Good job he managed to avoid that by drawing the Armor Smith. But as we said last turn, there are still a lot of cards left in his deck that are, yep. are, are playable for low mana cost. So. The problem for Firebat is that he can buff his weapon to enormous numbers, but that's still not enough to deal with the warrior itself. It's like only a means to deal with, let's say, a patron board or just with whatever board your opponent plays. But in this situation, it's, it's, it's just a mean, just a, it, it's just used to not overdraw anything. Right. Three, six, nine cards. So the sap makes him overdraw. 
Yeah, I would love to see the sap here. Sap's just not a good card against Patron Warrior in general, so the best use of it may just be to get him to burn a card. You've seen from the way he's been playing that he's digging really, really hard for one specific card. Mm -hmm. which is... Imagine if the next draw is Emperor. Exactly, yeah. That that one specific card that he's looking for is probably, you know, a Warsong Commander or Emperor uh, Emperor Thorasan. So if you're able to burn either of those cards using the sap, that's probably the best thing you're ever going to do with sap this game. So. We do see, though, he now has the Harrison and the Sabotage in his hand, so Death Spite will never be relevant in this matchup. He's able to mm -hmm, destroy mm -hmm. both of them now, which is fantastic for him. We actually didn't see the card being drawn by Cypher, right? Or did we? Uh, I'm not sure, but regardless, he just equipped the, uh, the Death Spite and went face, and uh, Firebat is able to deny it with the... Uh, with the Harrison Jones, develops a Shredder alongside it, and suddenly he has a nice amount of pressure on this board, and he's actually threatening to, to race the Patron Warrior here and not give him all the time in the world. Hmm. Um, so looks like we just had a little bit of a spectator issue yeah. with, with Cypher's side, but um, if he drew Emperor this turn, we will almost certainly see Emperor being slammed on the board here. Wind so slam, we, yeah. Wind yeah. slam on the we, board. We can assume that Emperor was not the draw. Unless he got legs, but yeah. Mm -hmm. In this situation, you have to deal. Uh, I mean, do you have to deal with the uh, with the minions? You most likely, you can also just play Death Spider and go to the face. Yeah. You just saw one Harrison Jones, so maybe there's a chance there will be no sabotage. Right. I mean, if I remember his hand rightly, he has both frothings. He has a Warsong Commander, and he has uh, an additional Whirlwind. So going into ten mana on the following turn, he does have enough damage to kill his opponent. Um, so yes, equipping the second Death Spite and swinging at fate. Wait, what's happened to the second? Didn't he have a second Death Spite in his hand at one point? Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, I'm sure. Oh, I guess that was just the spectator bug, right? So he'd already, oh, he'd already oh, okay, the War okay. Axe, but we still saw him as having a War. Uh, sorry, a Death Spite in his hand. So mm -hmm. he, he in fact does not have the second Death Spite in his hand. Okay. Well, that's pretty desperate to play those um, patrons just to draw for the Emperor, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> you you're um, almost entirely sure that this. This board of patrons that be immediately dealt with. Yep. Lurth Ebb comes down. Lurth Ebb, really, really effective card against Patron Warrior. So much of their uh, ball clearing potential, if they don't have a weapon equipped, comes from things like Execute or uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slams, Whirlwinds, that sort of thing. So if you're able to just lock them out of the game, not only is it a safety procedure to stop you being burst down. Ooh, does There's an Emperor, but does he have can time. We... Yeah, you don't have time to play that. Doesn't have time. 5, 10, 13, 17 damage already on board. And <laughs> if you count on Rogue not having two damage from hand and from his weapon. Right. Um, it's usually a huge, huge leap of fate. I don't. He can't even really afford to play the Unstable Ghoul. Like Emperor, Unstable Ghoul, Armor Up is a potential play to live. But then he doesn't really have enough damage left in his hand. Um, to seal the game on the next turn, so he only has one whirlwind effect to go along with the the double frothing and the patron. And I don't think that would be enough even against this big board. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's going to go for the clearing option here. Hope that this shredder drops something that he can compound his patrons with. And, and it actually drops. does. All right. Okay. So, so that gives him some clearing power here. Pretty nice for him. Um, and he'll probably just take care of the Harrison and then on. He, I would imagine push face with the second. I don't think so. You no. have to. Okay. You have to preserve your life. You are 19. That's not exactly a lot against the Rogue. Right, but I mean, I'm just thinking. At some point, you do also have to win this game, right? Are you gonna? Is your is your goal to like fatigue the Rogue out? I don't think so. So <sighs> you have to drop the Emperor next turn if you want to win the game. Right. Probably just. Uh, no mission mentor emperor into a, a chance of killing him next turn because you have double frothing berserkers with one word in effect so you need that second word in effect yeah i guess that's true yeah so tidy up the board as much as you can and try and buy yourself the the two turns that you need as a minimum to get the emperor down and then potentially burst them down to turn after that makes a lot of sense hmm. so we're gonna dagger up here clear out the last patron and i don't I was like thinking, do you really want to get free damage to the face? Um, I mean, this kind of set, just sets up lethal again for the next turn. So, you know, you saw Cypher have to make a desperate turn the turn before. Um, mm -hmm. So by putting him back in the same position where you're just threatening lethal again, 
you kind of make him have to make the desperate play again. Like by pushing the face to the five face damage, it's not really about you taking the damage. It's about pushing the five to your opponent and making them not feel comfortable to play Emperor. Okay, so um, Cypher Soul to Eviscerate already played. Yes. And in this situation, I wouldn't blame him for playing the Death, Death Spite and Emperor, but not Gnomish Inventor with Death Spite. Uh, well, this sets up lethal anyway, right? Without the Emperor. Um, and he actually gets to armor alongside it, so... Oh yeah, that's a good point. Okay, never mind then. Um, we do see that the Sabotage is just going to come down and absolutely crush this, unless Firebat just has lethal. Uh, Drake first can potentially pick up lethal. Tinker Shot, Soid Oil will definitely be lethal here. Blade is Flurry, is Blade Blade Flurry lethal? lethal? That's two damage, wait. That's two damage. Yeah, that's that's two. seven, ten. Uh, nope, it's not. Oh, it's not. No, definitely not. Hmm. So yeah, sabotage will come down here. But now you have no options of leveling your opponent as as firebat. Uh, yeah, sorry, as cipher. And that's why I didn't like about not playing the emperor because if he top decks like uh... a bull or a second whirlwind, that would have been GG. Yeah, if he top decked the second whirlwind here, he wouldn't have enough mana to play it. But would inner rage have been lethal if he top? No, no. I mean, if he played the um, the emperor less. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I'm just considering like the situation he's put himself in here. So okay. This yeah. removes whirlwind as an out, but would like would inner rage still be enough? So be inner rage would have been uh, three, six, and one. That's twelve. But yeah, inner rage would be enough. Sixteen. Yeah, that's exactly nineteen with inner rage. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty close, right? Um, yeah, the decision between Emperor and, and Death Biting Face last turn was definitely pretty close. Because um, I think um, if he Emperor last turn, he's actually just not setting up lethal, right? Because he only has one Whirlwind effect to follow it up. And mm -hmm. that's not going to be enough. If his, if his Emperor gets cleared, the, the board size probably gets reduced in clearing his Emperor. So he actually just wouldn't have lethal. So I think... Ooh. Oh, one turn, one card play. One card play. All right, there's an execute. That is the execute, yeah. But uh, you're really looking weak to anything that the uh, that the role plays. Yeah, you are. And uh, so to take down the Drake, he's asking. Wait, that's actually. He's asking for one damage from his opponent. So yeah, just yeah, yeah. Dagger up, hit face is going to be enough. So no way for uh, Cypher to survive that turn. So that is GG. Firebat levels up the series two to two. Mm -hmm. It looked kind of okay for Cypher at some point, but the amount of pressure that Firebat was putting on every single turn was just too much for Cypher to deal with, with all the executes. Yeah. He didn't draw those executes at all during the game uh, until the last turn, when it didn't matter at all. Yeah. And like I said, both Despite just got dealt, dealt with so efficiently, one with the Harris and one with the Sabotage. So, you know, any any long-term lethal plans that you, you put you put together with the Despite just got uh, immediately counteracted by those two weapon destruction cards. And more, mm -hmm. than, more than that, the two charges of Despite are also two removals in your deck. So by getting rid of those, that let Firebat's minions stick to the board for longer. Yep. Um, so exactly. yeah, that's that's just where all the pressure came from, and why uh, Cipher didn't have the time to carry out his game plan that turn. That game. Especially that he's on playing three weapons, and Firebird was sporting two removals. So that was an interesting, um, interesting way of the of things that developing here. But in this situation, you just want to get Cipher. Uh, Cipher wants to get those patrons on ten five with a. Let's say inner rage and an unstable yep. goal on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely like playing out the uh, the unstable goal here. Generally, you just want to play out your minions here. I think you absolutely mm -hmm. shield block on turn three because, like you said, you're just digging super hard for the inner rage here, which is yep. just outright game winning on turn five. If you're able to get the the full uh, four patron generation combo on turn five, Druid very rarely comes back from that sort of situation. But that's a good draw, I would say. It's certainly is. I mean, it wasn't bad beforehand, right? He just had to innovate coin Ancient of Law, but you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Emperor kind of makes it a bit more tasty. Um, the Despite will come down and answer this nice and cleanly. But um, the problem is Druid is then on Curve, on turn 5, and on turn 6. Right. Because you can follow it up with Ancient of Law and Ancient of War. 
How do you feel about not using the Death Bite this turn and just slam executing that? Because then you give your um, Unstable Ghoul every chance of living the two turns it needs to, because you're missing the extra card to activate the full patron combo here. Uh, I wouldn't blame him for that. I mean, even better is just slam for your War Axe. Uh, oh, wait, okay, I'm done. I missed the Fiery War Axe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. Yeah, this is significantly better. All right. I got halfway there, right? Like protecting the unstable gold is really important here because you're missing that extra whirlwind for the for the grim patron. But yeah, uh, fiery war axe obviously way way better than uh, using up one of your most important cards in the deck, which is the execute. So unfortunately, it's gonna get denied here. Um, he's and gonna go up by a low tip. Yeah, Firebat knows what the deal is. He can't leave that unstable ghoul on the board going into turn five, because if there was a patron in a rage, you know, if the two pieces that um, Cypher had were patron and in a rage and he was missing the death fight, mm -hmm. allowing that ghoul to live, um, just, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna spell death for the druid, so. I really like that he replaces the weapon uh, before the attack, so we can uh, set up a, the durability to one. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he gets kind of double benefits out of that. Firstly, mm -hmm. um, he, the Whirlwind effect now just takes care of the Lower Theb next turn. And secondly, if he does draw either Whirlwind or either Inner Rage, so that's four draws out of his deck, he now has the immediate setup for the Patron turn. Inner Rage to the rescue? Nope. nope. Im imagine Inner Rage right now. I'll be so insane. I think you still do it though, right? Make two Patrons and execute the 510? Yes. Yeah. I would agree. You have one Patron already in hand. Uh, I mean, two patrons already in hand, so you, you you have to go through the risky route here. I mean, on the uh, with the risky play, you saw one wrath, so you're not exactly counting uh, counting, uh, counting on your opponent having a second one. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of situation where uh, shield block is a nice utility to have in your deck because if he he's going to probably want to draw into shield blocks at some point this game, mm -hmm. if he can start to compound this uh, this patron board to his advantage, that's going to secure the board for him. So the only thing he's worried about is dying over the top to something like Force of Nature Savage Draw. So that's where shield block really comes into its own as like a, a late game ceiling card when. You know, patron patron does patron things, and you get an incredibly dominant board. But sometimes certain decks are just able to fireball you in the face and laugh at your board of seven patrons. <laughs> um, and yeah, Druid is very similar. And like, oh go, well, good job, you made seven patrons. That was cute. I'm just gonna fireball you. So, uh, what? Just I'm just gonna force of nature you. So, um, uh, yeah, chill block is a crucial card for putting a stop to that sort of thing. Now Cypher is an awkward spot when he needs to draw any kind of uh, damage sources which will deal only one damage and that's actually happened because the whirlwind I, I i think what do, what do you think about using because there are two options here mm -hmm. one is second patron mm -hmm. and just whirlwind mm -hmm. and not leaving the engine of law on board but that kind of leaves you also at <laughs> a, a not enough life maybe to sustain the situation right yeah or you just go for uh death spite and whirlwind and clear uh the board because that it, it uh, means you will take five damage i i have a third play which i think is the one mm -hmm. that cypher's going for which is just fiery uh sorry frothing berserker death spite and trade and then next turn you have the big setup with the patrons all over again because next turn you can just make four brand new patrons okay you develop a four four on the board immediately which demands an answer because it's threatening to just kill your opponent since you have a whirlwind effect available um, so yeah, I really... Oh, never mind. I really like this play that Cypher went for. Mm -hmm. Harrison Jones is, is going to be a pretty big punish here because now the Whirlwind effect goes off. It hits two minions and hello, this is a big game hunter. Wow. Okay. So this sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you see Cypher just kind of rock back in his chair there. That was just an absolutely devastating top deck. But there's two whirlwinds to fold up, so you can clear the big game hunter and produce four patrons, but the problem is those patrons will be cleared up. Uh, well, the problem is he's dead, more importantly. Um, so, force of nature, as we talked From about. From his perspective, he's of course not, but... Uh, yeah, but you know, you're going into mm -hmm. turn nine, you're, you're even dead to swipe at this point, so I don't think you have too many hopes of remaining alive in this situation. Uh, you're dead to Savage Raw, you're dead to Force of Nature, you're dead to Swipe, you're dead to Druid of the Claw. Charge. Like, what cards are in your opponent's hand that don't kill you in that situation? Exactly. And Firebutt takes the game. 
So he um, he didn't exactly stick to his plan because he um, didn't defeat the Handlock three times. Mm -hmm. But it happened in the most important matchup with the Shaman. Yes. Because that was the deck that was practically the weakest link in his pay, uh, in his lineup. But it was really um, lucky for him to get the first matchup with the Shaman against the Handlock. So the best matchup to begin with. And congratulations, Firebat. He's the second semi-finalist. And he will be playing against um, Orange. So a Team Arkham semi-finals will be happening. Um, next game that we'll have to play is the last quarterfinal between Kaldi and Stan Sivka, which will mean that one of those players will be meeting RDU from Nihilum in the semi-finals. And uh, before that, we'll be jumping to a short commercial break for a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.